Hey all here, OS Reviews here watching our hands-on review of the Iowa ARC-1 wireless Bluetooth headphones. So, if you were a child in the 80s and 90s, Iowa is a brand that you've probably heard of. They made many Walkman-style cassette players which were quite popular as well as other small speakers. So this nostalgic brand were quiet for a few years, but uh, they've been brought back to life. It says since 2015, there was a company that purchased the branding rights. In fact, their parent company is still Sony, so that's kind of interesting. It seems like we've come full circle. Now, at their peak, Iowa stood for quality, but also affordability, and the Iowa of 2018 still kind of wants to be both affordable as well as quality, but they're aiming more at the premium segment. So these headphones sell for $200, but they claim to have sound quality that rivals maybe $400 or $500 headphones, hence they're going for a very interesting packaging style, which is completely made out of cardboard, but their claim here is the reason for going for something so plain is that all the costs for packaging is going into the parts, which uh, make the product itself better. So that's a very interesting claim. In terms of specifications, they claim to have APTX, so Qualcomm certified for low latency. They have a built-in DAC chipset as well. Uh, it claims to have an interesting biocellulose composite driver with flexible surround sound which basically translates into having a more flexible driver that can move and hence reproduce more detailed sound. <laughs> Unzipping the protective case, again, we have just the headphones and we do have a micro USB cable for charging them. It takes about two hours to completely charge and there is an auxiliary cable as well if you want to use it in wired mode. So looking at the design of the headphones first, uh, they're very understated. They're not too flashy. They don't have anything crazy going on in terms of the design, which is kind of in line with Iowa's style. The overall construction quality though is quite good. The plates here are made out of aluminum. Same thing goes with the headband, which you can adjust in terms of getting the size correct. There's also the Iowa logo also made out of aluminum. And we have the logo again on the very top of the headband. In terms of the controls, they're all located on the right hand side and we have access to a key that you can tap on once to quickly look at the battery status, which is actually a pretty nice feature. Not many Bluetooth headphones have it. You can hold on this key for a few seconds longer to turn it on and there are voice prompts. Now one slight downside that I'm going to point out right now is the voice prompts, in my opinion, are a little too loud and you can't really adjust the volume of those prompts. So each time you turn it on and turn it off and play and pause the music, there's a pretty loud beep that is significantly louder than most music. Something I do like is that there's a slight taper or a flat edge on the bottom and it serves the purpose of lying flat on a surface without rolling around and also making it a little bit more comfortable when you're wearing them uh, around your neck as you're moving around. On the inside you also have some oversized left and right labels along with the Iowa logo printed inside. A quick size comparison, the last headphones that we've reviewed were the Blue Dio T6. So these are obviously much more affordable headphones that sell for around 70 bucks. Both of these headphones fold flat, but they don't fold down in terms of their arms moving inwards. And they have about the same size overall. Blue Dio has slightly larger cups on the outside, but uh, overall dimensions and weight are about the same. I will point out that the Iowa ARC-1 do not have active noise cancellation, however, so there isn't a switch that you can toggle on to reduce lower frequency sounds like the engines of planes, so that is one feature that it is missing. Moving into the audio quality and performance, as expected from an audiophile gray pair of headphones, there is a lot of nuance within the sound, whether that's with the treble, mids, or the bass, it's all very detailed. You can hear many layers of the music, some details that you may simply miss if you're wearing less expensive headphones. Again, you still get very clean and crisp trebles and highs, but at the same time, if you're listening to EDM, if you're listening to bass boosted uh, music, you can definitely hear and feel the bass. So bass heads will also appreciate these headphones. With that being said, maybe it's a Bluetooth chip that they're using here, but I wasn't completely blown away in terms of distortion and noise. You can still hear a very faint hiss in the background, especially if you are listening to music at a really low volume, or if you're playing and pausing the track, there is a discernible kind of a, a pop before the music starts playing, which is a little bit annoying if you are frequently, again, playing and pausing your tracks in between there, which I found, again, surprising because uh, the Blue Dio's and the liner that we tested didn't have that problem, but maybe because it's also using the latest Bluetooth 5.0. With that being said, as you start listening to music for longer than a, a few minutes, you definitely notice it less as you are immersed within the music, and then you listen to more details within the sound. Again, it is very granular and uh, offers a pretty wide soundstage, which is impressive. Battery performance in our testing was also quite good. Again, uh, I was able to listen to these for 
pretty much around 20 hours or so before they needed to be recharged. So that's longer than average, but also not quite as long as on some Bluetooth 5.0 headsets. It does have rapid charging technology, so you can charge these for only 15 minutes and they give you over three hours of playback, which I did find to be quite impressive. So if you're on the run, you can very quickly top these off. And one feature that is quite unique is called Q-Connect, and it's pioneered from Iowa. It allows you to connect to a second Bluetooth headset or speaker after pairing first the ARC-1, so you can share the music with another pair of wireless headphones or speakers. And in our testing, it did work pretty well. There's a slight latency again with the second device that you're connected with, but it's definitely a very cool way of sharing music wirelessly. So touching on the audio prompts, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, so whenever you play and pause the music, for instance, it has a noise, which is, again, louder than the actual track itself, which is a little jarring. So I do think that they should have the option of making these prompts, uh, again, less loud in terms of volume or just eliminating them and making the transition smoother. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Iowa Arc 1 wireless Bluetooth headphones. Again, it's a very nostalgic product. The headphones themselves are very comfortable and they have very accurate sound. It's super precise, uh, almost like how the artist would intend it to sound with a lot of detail and good bass as well. With that being said, it definitely isn't the cleanest sounding headphones in the world from the Bluetooth wireless connectivity standpoint because of that subtle hiss in the background. However, for the price, I think Iowa are already making smart choices and compromises again, trying to make the product as premium as possible, keeping in mind that uh, Iowa could have priced these more expensively, but they chose not to. So you can check out more details in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching Kira OS Reviews. That's been our review of the Iowa Arc 1 wireless Bluetooth headphones.